Um, this is the palace of Cecilienhof, as we pronounce it. You hear the name Cecily, and as a matter of fact, uh, there were two important persons for whom this palace here was built. Prince William, who was uh, designated successor of his father, William II, king in Russia and German emperor, or Kaiser, the famous Kaiser Bill, um, and uh, his uh, wife, Cecily, and her name was given to the palace. Especially our guests from England always do tell me immediately, well, but this is not your architecture, this is ours. And they are right, we are talking about a, a mock Tudor architecture. Uh, even though the architect was a German one, Schulz in Armburg, who designed the palace, yeah. which was built then between the years 1912 to 1917. It was shortly before the end of the First World War, in which uh, Prince William had an active part as an high officer. Uh, he did fight with a group of soldiers in France, in Verdun, where that terrible uh, and so uh, long um, battle uh, had taken place. And when he came back, uh, not only his father, but um, some other members, so he himself too, of the royal family had to leave Germany and had to go to exile. And like his father, William went uh, to the Netherlands, where he spent a couple of years on an island in the North Sea. But unlike his father, William came back in the early 20s to Germany and um, he was allowed to use this palace here as what it was built for, as a private residence. Even though there were two conditions given to him, one said, um, you're no longer an emperor or a king or whatsoever, you are an average citizen. So you better don't mix in politics. Something William didn't respect 100% because we know that uh, Adolf Hitler was received twice here um, before he became chancellor in this palace here. And uh, obviously William had the uh, hope that uh, this strange uh, politician Hitler could have had in mind to uh, reinstall monarchy, something that Hitler never ever had in mind, at least not without himself as emperor or king or Führer, which unfortunately he brought through and he realized. As so often uh, uh, during this job, I have to talk about the Second World War and especially here, um, I have to do that because after the war, Europe uh, was uh, in a sense reorganized here during that famous conference. But let me start um, uh, with uh, the fact that it was on the 1st of September 1939, Nazi Germany started the Second World War with its invasion of Poland. And as Great Britain was allied with, with Poland, Germany did find itself uh, very soon in war with Great Britain. It was a year later that Germany invaded even the Soviet Union, so-called uh, Operation Barbarossa. And so there were two important and strong enemies uh, to Nazi Germany. And one year later, after uh, or right the day uh, Japan had declared war on the United States, it was the 7th of December 1941 with the attack of Pearl Harbor, and Nazi Germany was in war even with the United States. So there was an alliance of uh, three very strong nations against Nazi Germany, the so-called anti-Hitler alliance. And uh, you see, when you find yourself in such a uh, situation, you have to talk with each other, you have to coordinate your moves, you have to organize the war, and you have to try to bring it to a successful end. And that was done during conferences, of course, and I think it's plain to see that uh, the most important conferences were those ones, the political leaders of these allied forces met. And this, during the Second World War, happened twice. A first time in Iran, in Tehran, 1943, and a second time uh, already in 1945 in uh, February on the Krim in Yalta. And the political leaders who met were the Soviet Union dictator Joseph Stalin, the British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, the US American President 
Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And especially this conference in Yalta was very important because the end of the war came inside. Several things had to be discussed and had to be pre-established at that conference. For example, the fact that uh, the Western Allies pushing against the German army from the West, they stopped their attacks about along the banks of the Elbe River, which we will approach later on today in the afternoon. And they did wait until the Red Army had occupied the whole eastern part of Germany, including the city of Berlin. But Berlin was occupied on the 2nd of May 1945. And that was the end of the war for the Berliners. Other things uh, were pre-established in Yalta, for example, the fact that uh, a whole state, Poland, had to be moved to the west. Poland lost its eastern territories, which then became part of the Soviet Union. On the other hand, uh, got parts of former eastern Germany. Millions of German citizens who, after the war, literally were kicked in many cases out of their properties and had to escape in western directions. The official end of the Second World War was on the 8th of May 1945, and so it was said we should have another conference. But Berlin was too much destroyed, there was no more building, big enough, intact enough, and first of all, in the eyes of Stalin, 